to order, um, and it is the regular meeting of the Niles Main District Library Board of Trustees at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, May 22nd, 2019. Diane, please call the roll. Karen. Yes. Here. Carolyn. Here. Dennis. Here. Diane. Here. It's running late. Uh, Linda gave previous notice. Tim. Here. All right. Let's stand to take a pledge of allegiance. So Linda can't make a point. She may come much oh. later. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United yes. States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of April 17th, 2019? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, second? Second. Okay. All right. Any corrections or comments about the motion, about the uh, minutes? I actually had a correction on page seven <coughs> under unfinished business. It was regarding our um, motion for public participation. Um, what I noticed is my statement wasn't included and it, it actually differed from Director Lemke's position. So. Um, I just wanted to read it. Um, I mentioned Director Lemke's um, 31 library examples were located in outlying areas, um, Kankakee, Cary, and were, were not representative of our population or scope. I provided local examples um, that allow residents to provide public comments throughout their meeting, Maine Township Municipality, Park Ridge Library, Glenview Library, and Northbrook Library. Um, as trustees, uh, we are elected to represent the residents in our library district. Public comments are extremely important to residents. As trustees, we should recognize their input by allowing public comments before we vote. So that was my position, which was obviously different than everyone else's. So I would like to know if you can add my comments as well, since it's important to have an accurate account of our topics. Well, as we said before, the minutes are not a verbatim record of what every single person has said during right. our minute during so, our meeting. So where is, where I don't is even, what she said? All right, okay, but I can just say my. Where are you looking at anyway on page seven? Um, yes, it talks about. Seven. It talks about. All right, it said that uh, Susan Lundy. Trustee Durbleck moved that members of the public who are interested can address the library. Yes, we missed my vote. statement of purpose. All right. Well, it, what is a brief? Do you well, the difference is, uh, here's here's what you need to understand. Are we running out of paper space or what? Yeah, well, we'll see the issue. minutes, the minutes are not a verbatim. And you know they're not, but when, when she's thing. trying to make a point for every, every single thing. thing okay, let me help you understand why this is important. Susan Lemke well, brought no, up 31 libraries. For us to have every single it's not, long you're missing you my point. in the minutes. Well, we just don't have it. Okay. So no, voting is not is not right. acceptable. Okay. 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 The attorney okay. says you when need to have an school. accurate account. Okay. If Susan brought 31 okay. libraries okay. and I said okay. none okay. of them are here. Would you please call the roll on um, the motion to approve the minutes? Karen? This is a zoo. Carolyn? No. This is Dennis. embarrassing. So, no, I, I disagree. I, Diane? Yes. Okay. Uh, Tim? Yes. All right, that's approved. We'll move on. This to is a violation of OMA, I'll tell you right now. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm disappointed that there's, she's making one comment and that you can't, you can't see it within your, your, we have added various comments and oh my gosh. instructions so, to the minutes in the past doesn't matter. at the request Shame of us. trustee Gerber. And as we've explained you constantly many, many, in, many times uh, before, I know. we do Only not everybody put else every full not statement. Only that is, is the purpose of the video. The video captures the no, entire it's not. Statements. Written, our record. Written then minutes. Our last secretary last takes minute. down what the motions are. What <coughs> the whole she is. Why don't you just put five minutes on this? This, this administrative assistant five took minutes two. before right. the next thing was director, and they were and a lot different. Diane, Jeez. would you please swear the yes. new trustees? We can just sit where we are right now. Uh, Diane Wilson is 
Okay, fine. Should we stand? No, just do it. Hi, Karen Diamond. And are you doing uh, Carolyn at the same time too? I think we should stand because I don't think you could tell what's going on in what if you watch the video. I mean, it is important that we're being sworn in. Okay, Everybody fine, else takes like, time Come to on down here so you can get in the video and we'll stand. Come on. Come I don't want to get in the video. Well, that's one of the video, right? Why no, I think here? we should take the appropriate time to All swear right. in trustees that we're elected. Then let's go. Let's well, go. Let's, let's, let's do that. Come on, let's do that. You know what? Why don't you guys resign right. so you don't have to do anything? Uh, All right, do so you want to come and stand in the video? I thought you wanted, you wanted to be in the I'm video. I'm not concerned about the video. I'm concerned right. about us not being All able right. to have a proper meeting. All right, well, do you want to be smart? Do you want to crawl under the not. table, too, and she can, like, peek and, and do, read it to you? Do you want to crawl under the table? As no, I want you to act like a professional. But do you want to be sworn in? That's what we're doing now. Well, now that we're standing and we're holding our hands, yes, we should okay. be sworn in. Okay, fine, let's do this. Together. Sure. I, Karen Diamond, and Carolyn Driblick. I, Karen Diamond. I, Carolyn Derblick. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Trustee. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Trustee. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Trustee. Of the Niles Main Library District to the best of my ability. Of the Niles Main District, library, library, district. library District to the best of my ability. Of the Niles Main Library District to the best of my ability. Okay. And you sign here, please. Karen, you set this meeting off on the wrong foot. Oh, oh, excuse me. I don't think I set it off on the No, wrong you foot. did. Because all she wanted was five sentences, maybe, to be put into the document, and, and you constantly pushed me in. Can't you find a, an, an yeah, inkling to, to bend? To bend? I asked her if you wanted to put a small comment in. Oh, and she said, don't no. touch me. Oh, don't touch me. Uh, and don't mock me. Be an adult, yes, be a professional, right. as Carolyn like has said. Right. Yeah. Okay, well that's very good, but try to be a professional as Carolyn is. Alright? We voted on this issue, it is done. I, I'm tired of, of well, I'm tired of coming to this. Then resign. That's what you want. Well, if because you are tired of the process, procedures, it's five to two constantly. constantly. It was not. There's not even five, seven people here. How could it be five to two? Well, it's the same people voting well, against this other, uh, Carolyn and myself, all the time. Because it's a game, I know. This it's is a, a child game. Sure. game. Oh, um, I it's just ridiculous. You, you, you've you've mm -hmm. raised. Okay, we're just going to take a break. break. We're just, just going to take a short break. You've raised to all let, kinds of issues here because you've got me down. off on a bad foot. Everybody and else I think here. Everyone's yeah. too. So we're just going to take a break. We're just going to take a break for a few minutes to. Just calm down. Diffuse the situation, good idea. I'm, I'm disappointed. Thank you again. All right, we um, resume the board meeting now. And next we'll hold the election of officers. We elect officers for a two year period of time. Uh, we'll begin with the election of the board president. And nominations are now in order for the office of president. Uh, may I have any nominations from the floor for the office of board president? I would like to make a nomination. Okay. I nominate Tim Spadona for president. Are there second. any other nominations? Do we need second these? I don't think nominations need to be seconded. They're just made. Okay. I'll nominate Daddy for uh, Treasury. Well, wait. First, we vote on each one at a oh, time. Oh, we vote on each one. Each one at a time. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So uh, we only have one nominee. Um, all in favor of electing Tim, Tim Spadoni as our board president, indicate by saying aye. 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 All right, nominations are now in order for the office of vice president. Do I have any nominations? Uh, yes. You? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, all right. Okay. Right. All right. Are there any other nominations? Okay. We have a voice to vote for that. All in favor? Uh, that nomination you can by saying aye. Aye. Nominations are now in order for the office of 
secretary. Anything the secretary? Any other nominations? All in favor of Diane Olson for secretary, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All right, nominations are now in order for the office of treasurer. Nominate for treasurer. Any other nominations? All right. Uh, voice vote then. All in favor of Petty for Treasurer, indicate by saying aye. 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 All right, fine. We have our new slate of officers, and I'm going to step over and out of this seat and let Mr. Tim Spadoni take over. Um, and I think the only other thing that we're moving on to now is whether or not anyone has registered for public comment. Totally here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so uh, you'll have to excuse me because it is my first two minutes. All right, so we have some registered people registered for public comments. I see. Uh, let's see. When addressing the board, speakers will be limited to five minutes per registered individual and thirty minutes overall. All speakers must maintain professional demeanor. And our first speaker is Steve Gordon. Dowdy. I'm sorry. Dowdy. 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 Thank you. Good evening, folks. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, public comment policy. Uh, my impression of what I've seen for the last six months. Uh, this board does not want to spend time in public comments. Uh, here, here's comments or statements that I've uh, heard you say uh, on the video. It will make up. It will make the meeting too long. One of you said after I left the room, he doesn't represent all the residents and their comments in mind. Um, Recently, you passed a revised policy that continues to limit public comment. Again, I urge you to allow public comments at the end, and I also urge you to uh, allow public comments before you vote. Try it. Try it. If you don't like it and it doesn't work and it extends the meeting too long, change the policy again. But try it and stop giving the public residents the excuse that's going to make your meeting too long. Since I've been here in December, there's been three people in December, two people in January, two people in February, and one person in March. There's three of us tonight. That's not a whole lot of people. One of the things that you, what you don't do or you didn't do is, according to the old policy, you say that you cannot comment uh, or answer any questions, but the old policy does state that you can comment because it's the same as the new one. So you've been saying all this time, we generally don't respond. As a rule, as a quote, as a rule, we don't respond. And that was incorrect. And even the new policy says the same thing. So I expect to hear something, a yes or a no, or something brief. And if, if, if I say something or uh, it's inaccurate, my name is on this list and my phone number is on this list, please give me a call and correct me or answer my question. At least try. I've never heard from any of you. Programs. You have too many of them. A lot of them don't even relate to education. You got some that are already in, already going on in Niles. Uh, you got a uh, uh, seniors meeting here. You got a senior center across the street. Uh, uh, you got teenagers meeting here, which constantly you're battling about. They're too damn noisy. You got a teen center at Golf Mill. So what are you what are you doing? With duplication that costs taxpayers money, and that's just a, a couple of the things. There's a lot more. You get too many programs. The budget, current budget, you're out of control. You're, you're, you're spending way too much money. 
the director should be meeting with each department head and manage their budget, not the other way around. The department heads in this library should not be saying how much I pay for taxes. That should be the director's job to tell them how much they can spend to stay within a budget. <laughs> if residents knew about that, then they, 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 there'd be a lot more people here. Contracts. I believe this board needs to come up with standards on contracts that your director, your director is managing. Do you have a uh, a, a thirty day uh, uh, a thirty day notice clause in your contract? That if, if uh, I think as he prefer or someone time, well we can fire him. You can't fire somebody when you sign sign a contract. You got to go to court, which costs us money, not you. So protect us by putting a 30-day notice in there to get out of these contracts to protect you and the residents of Knights. This board must insist that the director maintain a budget and keep it within reason. You should direct her to keep this budget. If that person can't do it, it may be time for a change. Now that's not a personal attack on you, that's a business statement, not a personal attack at all. It is a business statement. I had to be responsible for budgets, and believe me, I had to stay within it. That was my job, and if I didn't, I would have gone. Lastly, you people have a tough job. I, I, I am truly impressed by what you do. It takes time and effort out of your lives to do this, and I appreciate that. But this board needs to make some changes. Mr. Daddy, your time is up. Thank you. Steve, thank you very much for your comments. Yeah, please contact me if you've got any questions or if anything that I said wrong. Absolutely. Tim, may I make a quick response? Absolutely. I just want to say that you are under a misapprehension about the way the budget process works. We, I do meet with each of my supervisors together with the business manager, and they tell me what they want, and then we could put the budget together based on what they have requested, but also based on our previous information, the statistics that we pulled. It's a, it's, uh, it goes through an ordinary budget process. It's certainly not that the supervisors hold out their hands and we say you can have as much as you want. We did only raise the budget this year by half of 1%. And that, in this economy, is a very good budget. And that's all I have to say on the subject for now. Thank you. Okay. The budget meeting, why wasn't that video? It was video. It was video. It was video? Oh, it's not online. Yeah, it takes a few days for okay. it to be. Oh, I see. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Our next uh, speaker is Joe McCool. Hi, Joe. Um, I'm here to talk about the uh, capital plan that was talked about on Monday. And yesterday I was at a, a meeting of the uh, park board. And the uh, ice arena, ice, Iceland Park, which is on Ballard, just west of Milwaukee, um, the roof is shot. They're going to be putting a new rubber roof on there. And they had six bids. They budgeted $140,000 for the project. They had six bids, and I have them here listed if you want, I can send out copies. The highest was uh, $244,000, the lowest was $86,400. Uh, this $86,400 they rejected because uh, the bidder wasn't qualified. They couldn't check his references, and, and uh, so it was kicked out. But um, they took this bid from WeatherGuard for 102000 This is a reliable company that's been around quite a while. They accepted this bid. Uh, now, I have an idea. I've, I've been past the ice room park there several times. I know the size of it. It's about the size of a roof on this library here. And I think so, Mr. McCullough. I, I, I don't agree with you. I used to be at that Fox Arena all the time. I believe it's a little smaller than that. I believe they're talking about the ice arena and the park. They're both identical roofs. They're both going to be replaced. Okay. 
Okay, you said so nice. If add those two so together, it's probably more. It might be. Plus, this building was, an addition was put on here, what was it, eight years ago? No, it's, it's more than eight years, isn't it? How many? 20, 20 years. Or oh, 20, 1997. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Time is fine, right? <laughs> okay, well, anyway, uh, you have budgeted here a million two for, for a roof. Now, I don't know if you got any estimates, but I, I can give you the names of the companies here, and you can Thank check you. them out and see what they say. Yeah, Thank so you. We will. Here. Thank you. Yeah, you just need to get the copy to Greg. Yeah, Greg will take care of it. Okay. So, I mean, if, if you put numbers down without getting bids and, and you, you run these things up, I mean, this this could be, um, in, in, in effect, a million dollars over budget from what you're planning here because you got a million to listed and you might get your roof in for 200000 Yeah, you're absolutely right. So, I, I hope mean, so. There you go. I hope so too. So do I. Yeah. I mean, and I, I hope this doesn't carry forward in, into uh, a budget where we're going to have a, a tax levy increase. No, this, oh, is, this money is not. coming from our special reserve. It is not from the general fund. It's money that's there that we just have to, once we get the bids, yeah. shift around. So, so you're, you're not, you're using a reserve for this? Correct. We're not yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, these numbers look, some yes. of these numbers like for furniture and stuff, it, it looks way inflated. So, right. Well, we don't know yet. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Joe. For a couple of comments. Sure. Um, so every four years, uh, we have an engineer go through the building and look at all the mechanicals mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that the mechanicals are uh, functioning well and there's still plenty of useful life in, in them. We also have um, we also have our general contractor from the uh, renovation walk around and look at the uh, envelope. So, looks at the roof, looks at the foundation, looks at um, uh, the foundation wall that surrounds uh, the parking lot in, in front of Waukegan uh, to make sure that all of that is stable, um, looks at the windows, the doors, I mean, anything that you can imagine. Think of it as a home inspection if you're, you know, if you're buying it, but, you know, much, uh, much more involved. Um, the output of that is advice on uh, what um, needs to be replaced in the short term, what needs to be replaced in the longer term, um, things that maybe are at the end of useful life but with a little loving care can last a little bit longer. Uh, and along with that comes their professional advice, advice on, um, on potential costs for replacement. What, okay. what, what type of roof is on here right now? It's a rubber roof, and, and, it is. It's, and it's insulated since. Um, is it leaking? It, yeah, it, it leaks. It leaks uh, uh, in different spots every year. And yeah. allow, me, please, allow me, please. Uh, it, and uh, we have a maintenance program where uh, we walk the roof and we identify the leaky areas and we do have it patched. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an annual occurrence. Usually, uh, as we go into the winter, because winter is, you know, stresses uh, a lot of those things to the point where they will be. Um, uh, we're completely out of warranty. We had a 20-year warranty on, uh, on the roof when it was put in, so we're completely out of warranty. Up till now, we've been able to go back to the uh, original installer or, I, I, or the product manufacturer. I can't remember exactly what yeah. the. Um, you know what the path is in order to defray those costs. Some of those costs we have to, you know, bear on our own. But it hasn't been huge. Uh, for this point in time. So uh, when we suggested replacing the roof and we put in a million two, um, that was based on the advice of the people that walked. Now we're not sitting here with a check made out to blank contractor for a million two. We have to go through a thorough bidding process, and we do that. Um, it may be less, it may be more. We are trying to uh, uh, put roof on approximately somewhere between 35 and 40,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. uh, the building itself is 65,000 square feet, but you know, given you know different floors and so forth, it obviously reduces uh, to a you know smaller footprint uh, on, on the roof. So that's kind of you know that's kind of the process that we've gone through uh, so far. Uh, we can't, um, you know, we can't go out into the public for, for a project this size and give us bids. 
you know, and uh, for replacement and so forth, because when we actually go out for real, we'll have a hard time getting them to come back. But, you know, thank you for the list. Um, I hope My point was, is that these numbers are unrealistic. Pardon? I thought you had bids on these things. No, no. I said these numbers no, these, are not unrealistic. No, no, they're not. They may be unrealistic. Yes. I, I can see that. Yes. When um, according to what the engineer but the, said. But it's based on, you know, it's based on the level of, the level of advice and the process that, you know, that we also took uh, four years ago before we put the capital plan rolling, you know, together and rolling forward from that point. What was the cost uh, when they did the install? Excuse me? First, what was the cost when they did the first install? On the roof? Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you. I don't have that information. It was, um, it was part of... Yeah, it was it was part of the uh, ninety seven project. The total project, I think, was around uh, eight million or nine million dollars. There should be a line item in there. For sure. Yeah. It doesn't have it. Can I ask a question? Um, so, in terms of this rubber roof recommendation, I'm not sure what type of roof you were considering. Is it? Is yeah, it's a rubber roof. So, for a million, you were going to get a rubber roof as well. Yeah. Um, so. What um, what generally happens from time to time is the building's code, the building codes change, mm -hmm. and over time uh, the building code has changed to a point where insulation has to be uh, considered a little bit differently, right. uh, as well as the various uh, uh, substrata uh, beyond that, and um, you know what what you see as a million two is full replacement of uh, the insulation to bring it all up to code, and so it's not just you know heat it up, roll oh, up the I, rubber, I, I totally and, and, and roll it down, and you know seal the seams. But I'm, so gonna, I'm thinking that a roof that had to be replaced for the park district definitely was scrutinized by the inspectors, and I don't know. you know everything gets I old. Speak to that. Well, what I'm trying to say is if they can replace similar space for two hundred thousand, it, it, it was certainly similar space. it's it is certainly something we should look into and then before going to bid and since he can provide you with the companies who came out for the Very park nice. district could you just get quotes from them sure. um but you know what we'll probably do is uh, construct a bid and, and uh, have uh, at least one firm you know take a look and help us with the uh, specifications uh, that we'll put in the bid documents and, and send them oh, out so so, the, so you pick a company that writes your okay. bid is Carolyn, can, we, can we move on let's talk about no that. excuse me I have a question. no 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 no, no. We, we have this is talked account. about we the budget we're all done with that we, we go out to bid we'll go out to bid we can talk so about it later let's, this let's move on. i'm not waiting Fine. until you go out yes. to bid all right, to figure out what you're doing so the next was the other person yeah no we're all done with all the okay I just want to make sure she gets her that she needs to work. All right, the next item on our agenda is the treasurer's report, but I'll present it tonight Thank since you. I prepared it and uh, you know, I'll have to put Patty on the spot. Yeah. So April is the 10th month of the fiscal year and we are 83.33% of the way through our budget and the library's overall expenditures are under budget to at 76 of total budget, so we are clearly uh, monitoring our budget and doing well at not spending over what we had uh, allowed the library to spend. Our total revenues are 102% of the budget on page 9. Uh, fines are 163% of budget. Uh, a couple of items on page 9. Replacement taxes are 68%. Invest spending comes 163% and passport income is 130% of budget so we're clearly doing more passports, uh, passports than we had done. Uh, uh, Greg, did you want to speak a little bit on the fines? Um, explain how that works. So, um, uh, the way that libraries uh, treat fines is when a fine is incurred on, um, uh, on one of the library's items, um, it, it gets uh, posted against that particular individual's account. We don't include that on our books. Uh, and the reason that we don't include it on our books uh, is because a lot of those fines are not going to be collected, just the nature of it. So if we, if we posted all of the fines that were outstanding on our books, accounting rules dictate that we would have to post what's called a reserve, basically an estimate of bad debts uh, against that 
and come down to a number that's much smaller than, than the overall uh, number. So what we do is we account for fines on a, on a cash basis. Okay, so we don't include fines in our financial statements until we collect them. Okay. Uh, one, of the thing that, one of the things that's been going on in the consortium and CCS is that they've started to function as a clearinghouse. So if um, uh, uh, Lincolnwood, is it Lincoln? yeah. if Lincolnwood uh, collects fines on our behalf, then you know that's notified. They notify uh, CCS. CCS then sends them a bill on our behalf, and we collect those. You know the actual envelope. Um, so once a quarter, and most. You know, they're catching up now. Which is why you see fines a little bit higher. Right. You see all of those fines going back and forth where all 26 entities that are in CCS currently are paying and receiving uh, fines uh, uh, and, and reimbursements for materials. So like if you kept a book and then we would charge you for that book, the replacement cost of that book. And, and if you took that book from Lincolnwood, you would pay us, let's say, and we would forward those fines to Lincolnwood. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that is going on. So that's that's why the fines are a little bit above uh, above budget at the point. Sure. At this point, um, it could also be that you know people would somehow somehow see the light and decide to pay them more often. But I think that's kind of nicer. All right. So on page 10, our library materials are the same as last month, which is running slightly higher than budget, but we are expected to be even out by the end of the year. And our operating expenditures are 72%, which is running well under budget again. On page 11, general admin is 67%, uh, continues again well under budget. And page 12, our employee fringe benefits are on budget, utilities are on budget. And our capital expenditures uh, is, is well under, but you know we haven't um, designated the things that we've got to spend on capital expenditures, and we're bumping things off for the next fiscal year. Um, all items on page 13 are running under budget, except for per count, but we'll talk about that before. So uh, overall, well, I think we're doing an excellent job, and um, I do appreciate the effort that our director and our staff uh, make every month to uh, keep our expenses less than we had anticipated. Does anybody have any comments about the treasurer's report? Uh, Tim, I do, I do want to make uh, one uh, comment on the revenue side. You sure. already talked about replacement taxes oh, yes. uh, previously, and I believe um, in the May economy we'll see uh, a replacement tax receipt of something around uh, I think it's either thirty-six or thirty-eight thousand dollars, which is going to put us over um, over the budget, or right at I'm sorry, right at the budget for the uh, for the year of the shadow election. Sure. What actually is that? The replacement taxes. Yeah. What is the couple of kind of stuff? So, what used to happen is the state of Illinois would tax businesses for. Um, for personal property, mm -hmm. okay. As a, it's, I mean, you know, personal property is kind of a funny term, um, but um, it's a state. It's a, it's a, it's a term that's widely used in the state to mean uh, property that's not real property, like a house or a business mm -hmm. building or something like that. A car, for example, or a delivery van would be considered to be personal property, or the equipment to do a process would be personal property. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe it was in the 70s, the state outlawed the uh, personal property tax, mm -hmm. and at the same time, to, uh, you know, to make libraries, municipalities, and other tax collecting organizations whole, they instituted something called the personal property replacement tax, which is part of the uh, state income tax that businesses pay. Okay, so you know there's this artifact related to personal uh, property tax, which no longer exists and has been perpetuated for I guess 50 years, almost mm -hmm. yeah, 40 some years, and uh, and that's what that represents. 
Aren't you glad you asked? Yeah, so basically that's whatever businesses live or are, are operated in this general area mm -hmm. would have to pay in that. Okay, let's go. It's not taxpayers. Well, there are taxpayers, yeah. but it's not. Yeah, but it's, it's through the income tax, so you have to get income in order to mm -hmm. generate the tax. Okay. All right, thank you. Next item on the agenda is approval of payment of our operating expenses. Uh, I will now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $263,495.55, uh, payroll expenses of two eight two six one seven and 18 cents for a total monthly expense of six zero nine one six seven and forty seven cents. Did I miss? Uh, all right. First thing I screwed up. So we're going to approve payment of bills of operating expenses of two six three four nine five and fifty five cents. Payroll expenses of two eight two six one seven and eighteen cents. And special reserve expenses of six three zero five four seventy four cents for a total monthly uh, expense of six zero nine one six seven and forty seven cents. So moved. Uh, Aaron, move. Do I have a second? Second. second. Any? All right. Um, do I have any comments on this? We can start with Karen. Okay. No, Dennis. No, Carolyn. Um, is this the time to review the check register that payments? Uh, that was the last item. No, no, that this is the right one. This was the right one. Okay, no problem. You know what? Um, I was asked if um, our chapter one, which I guess is now being circulated, it looks really nice. So I was asked if it costs more than what we've paid in the past. The only answer I could offer is I know the price increased, but that's because distribu distribution increased from four to six. So um, I was wondering, the same cost. The per issue cost is the same. No, the total cost to distribute six is more than to distribute yes. four. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, so it's that's when I get the same. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you know what I never could get clarification on is, isn't there an additional charge for whatever the post office does by zip codes? Is that a couple thousand? We have to pay for the mailing. Uh, yeah, we pay a couple thousand, I, I believe, for mailing in total, of which a portion of that is uh, by address because they are being, uh, those items are being uh, sent to split carrier routes, half in our district, half out of our district. So we only want to pay for the addresses that are in our district. So you pay, it's, it's considered bulk mail, is that correct? Uh, I don't remember exactly right. what, I just, their, what, what the rate I is, but it's different than than the uh, seven cents or nine cents that we uh, that we pay per issue just to have them unaddressed and go to everybody on a route. So, so there, so Niles, I think, is a bulk rate, and then these people in these other line areas are a different rate. No, Every, so um, so we have a district map. Yes. And I'm sorry. Um, uh, so it includes Niles, but it includes unincorporated right. uh, displays and other areas of Cook County. Uh, there are carrier routes all through our district which are fully contained within the boundaries of the district. Those that straddle a boundary, you know, that are some percentage in, some percentage out, we only pay for the addresses that are that are in the district, and we pay a higher rate than the lowest bulk rate that we pay for everybody else because we're asking them to send to specific addresses as opposed to all 187 people in a particular No problem. Route. So what, do we know what the cost is to distribute the Chapter 1? It's about $2,000. A year? No, per issue. To, just to mail it? Yeah. We pay five thousand dollars a month to print it. Well, it's it's uh, uh, that amount is for every two months at this point because it's six times a year. This last edition that went out, how much did it cost to print it? Uh, about six thousand dollars. Okay, and it costs another two thousand just to mail. Yes. So then we're up to like forty-two thousand a year. Okay. Yeah, I I wasn't sure what those figures were. 
Okay, and then I had another question. Um, there's a term, oh, hall pass. Um, it looks like they're background checks, but That's I noticed they, they vary in price. Is there a reason? Yes, because um, uh, the uh, per unit, the per unit cost on a background check is six dollars. So if we have a department that has three people they want background checks on, it'll be eighteen dollars. Oh, so it's just quantity. I thought maybe it was for different reasons. Okay. No. And Everything should be divisible by six. And they're pretty much. Oh, that's good. Point. And they're pretty much. That's employees. That's what that's all about. So uh, we also. Else, right? um, uh, because of the uh, exposure that we carry related to volunteers, oh, we also do we also okay. do background checks right. for volunteers. So just staffing costs. Okay, thank you. Right, that's all I have. No, not yet. Yeah, you should. <laughs> We're not left yeah. mm -hmm. Do you have any other questions, Carolyn? No, that was it. Thanks. Great, thank you. Patty, you have any questions? No, thank you. Diane. No. Great. Okay. Uh, so, do we have a motion to, um, uh, do I have a motion? We have a motion. Oh, yes, we did. Okay. I'll take, take. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Dennis? Sure. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Yes. Okay. Next item is our uh, director's report. Susan? Um, I just have a few things I wanted to, um, we, we had a very uncomfortable meeting on Monday and many harsh things were said and I just wanted to, uh, because my staff was here listening and my staff will be watching the video and some of the things that were said uh, are going to make them feel terrible and I just wanted to say a couple of things about that. One is that I think that when we talk about the budget, we talk about it as if we are trying to keep costs down. That's what I keep hearing from you guys. We try to keep costs down all the time, but we do it throughout the year. We do it on a very small level where Diane checks everything that she orders to see if she can get a better price on it. We do it with the databases. We do it with Dave does it on all of his maintenance things. We are always trying to save taxpayer money here. We are very, very conscious of that. So that's just one thing. I just want to defend my staff and myself and Greg and everybody. We work really hard to keep our costs down here. I realize that that's not your entire point. You have a whole point about the fact that we have a lot of staff and that's where most of the costs are, which is very true. But I just want to be sure that we're not making it sound like the staff takes the taxpayer money and throws it in the airline. No, nobody's ever said that. No, no. Said that. There was a little bit of an implication that we don't work hard at keeping our costs down. Yeah, and we do. Well, and then my next thing is, I just wanted to say uh, that the work that the staff does is wonderful work, and it's vital work. We um, libraries these days are, you know, a resource for people. Many people are working all by themselves now. A lot of people working for on their own. Uh, a lot of people are very lonely. They are isolated. We have a lot of children being uh, in uh, family care situations and not being in their fam immediate families. They're, and, and those caregivers come to the library. A lot of people are using the library as what they call a third place, a place that's not home, it's not work, it's a third place where they can be. And we've been talking about this in libraries for about 10 or 15 years. But, um, but it, it's all the more important now. We have many people coming here and spending a significant part of their day because this is the place where they have to go. And, um, and some of the places in the village across the street are also wonderful places, but they don't help the main township people, the unincorporated district. That's, they are not welcome at the senior center and at those places. That's only for, the, for half of the district. Um, and then I just wanted to say, you know, we uh, had some kind of mean comments about the newsletter last time, though we did acknowledge that it's very nice, and I just wanted to say, um, I feel like Sasha and his department didn't get the love that they deserve for this newsletter because I think they hit it out of the park. I think it's I think you did try to say that it, it's a, it's nice, but I want to if you can play the wave here. Uh, I got this call last week after a lady got her copy of chapter one. I just wanted you to hear it. Good morning. Uh, my name is Rose Booth with New York. I'm an out resident for over 50 years, and I just want to call it. I'm sorry. Let me, I'm sorry. Let me get a little lower. <laughs> she, is she a little hard of hearing? <laughs> she might be, yeah, poor thing. Yeah, I'll start it with her, and uh, now that I know where the buttons are. 
morning. Uh, my name is Lois Lee Whitney. Welcome to now. It's resident for over 50 years. And I just want to call and thank you. What a beautiful, beautiful um, Niles information pamphlet I got today. It is, well, yesterday in the mail, or the day before, I guess. But anyway, I just got to reading it. It is so interesting, so beautifully presented so informative, so well organized. It is a delight. Thank you so, so much. And God bless for all the years you've been such a blessing to Niles residents. Have a great day. And remember, Jesus loves you. He does. <laughs> so besides the fact that it was extremely sweet and endearing to hear, I just think it's important to, to remind ourselves that, that I know there are people advocating for the taxpayers, and that's very important. But there are taxpayers who are very, very glad for the money that they spend at the library. They, uh, they support the work we do. They, uh, they wouldn't change it. They, they're very happy with what we're doing. So I just think, you know, that we need a little bit more positive. I would like to respond. Uh, but I'm in the middle of my presentation, though, so you can ask. When you're her. finished, if you don't mind. Yes. Um, and then um, I have another. Excuse me, Susan. Sure. So we'll have a go around for everybody okay. to have a chance to respond. Um, and then I also, um, uh, we have a video to show you that I, I think reflects a little bit of what's been going on here. It's the, um, it, it, we asked people that came to the party for the 60th anniversary, what are some of their most memorable moments at the library? And so I thought that you would enjoy seeing uh, some of the activity that took place that night since many of you were not able to be here.
of memories, but I was thinking about it a little bit and I decided my favorite group of memories is when the Harry Potter books were coming out. And we had lots of Harry Potter parties and it just was a huge celebration of reading and it brought so many kids who didn't think that they could read long books into the fold of actual readers. It was a very exciting time and we just loved the books. So it was very fun. My happiest and funnest memories of being here at the library has been with my grandchildren. They are so enthusiastic and excited whenever I mention coming to the library. And they immediately take off in two different directions <laughs> and know exactly what they want to do and where to find it. And they know to go up to the librarian in the children's department and get help. Everybody here in the children's department is phenomenal. I want to thank you. My most memorable um, time in the library, I think, would have to be on that memorable 9-11 day. People just came into the library and they just wanted to talk. And we turned the TV on and we just did a, an impromptu thing in the meeting room so that the public could come in and sit and watch and talk if they wanted. We put coffee out and we just kind of were responding to the needs of the community. And it really struck me that day and as I think of that day, I think more and more about how this particular library has always responded to the needs of the community. Happy 60th anniversary to the library. I'm so happy that I was able to be a part of it for um, that those 26 years. Happy 60th anniversary and many more to come. Here's to another 60 years of the Niles Bay District Library. People that are trying to keep the costs down, I think that's important too, but I just don't want to lose sight of the fact that what we do is valuable. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention is that um, you know everything that Greg just told you about the fines and the libraries billing each other, actually we voted this morning at the CCS Governing Board to discontinue that process because it was so much work of the shuffling money back and forth and in the end, yeah. it was, it was, you know, wow. it was not worth it. So we did a one-year experiment on it, and, uh, and Athena actually was very helpful in that process with Cindy in trying to get it all working as best as it possibly could, and in the end it just did not seem like it was going to be worth it. So now uh, libraries can still approach each other if there's a big imbalance of money, but in general we're going to stop doing that. So that's... Now you learned all about it, and then yes. it back. So that is all I have for you, but I'm happy to answer any questions if you have it. Right, here. Um, I just have a few questions. So how is that going to work with the fines today? Each library keeps the money they have to collect. Is yes. that how it will work? Yeah, that's how it worked for many years, and it's going to go back to work again. Okay, okay. I have just a very few questions about your director's report. Um, the Mango li uh, language use, which is up 188 sessions for April, that's on page 38. In ESL Russian, does that mean people who are coming here from Russia are using the English. English versions yes. of this? Language? That's correct. Yeah, they have a few different versions like that. All right. Page 44, you mentioned the patron says that whoever signed up for the deal series, of course, is online as a We just reviewed the cards so that you can continue. What are the deal series, of course? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, horses. 
Um, are you familiar with Linda Learning? His yeah, well, video? yeah, sort of, sort of. I mean, it's really it's very that. similar. It's okay. another product. Yale is one of the big database vendors. They have lots of different products. Um, Linda was here, she should be able to talk that they use them in school libraries a lot. Um, uh, okay. But it's just a series of courses that you can take to get certified. Certified. Or just, you know, get a certification that you took, like, seven courses on, you know, learning PowerPoint or kind of stuff like that. So it's online learning um, through video tutorials. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank so you. Correct. Okay, I think I just have one or two other quick questions. On uh, our trusted calendar, page 46, um, the ALA conference. I thought that was in Chicago this year. It's uh, for this budget year. It will be. It's in June, so it's the in the 2018-19 oh. budget for Washington, D.C., and the 2019-20 budget for, for Chicago. Okay, right. I'm sorry, I was getting confused about it. Yeah. Next year, yeah. year. Okay, all right, fine. Me too. All right, and then... Um, was, oh, the sound zones. Um, I'm not sure if those, I, I don't really notice those clearly marked. Can you tell me where are those marked up? How do we use pictures well, there to are, see those? Well, there are maps um, in several places that are color coded, like by the elevator, and then there are signs in each of the areas, but I agree that, you know, we sort of put the signs up experimentally and we never quite finalized where they were going. And we have a problem on the second floor in that um, you have kind of conflicting groups of people trying to use the space and you have, you know, some people that want it really quiet so they can concentrate and then you have uh, noise coming up from Team Underground and you have, and it sort of was all designed to be more conversational and big tables so that multiple, you know, people could be working on projects together, but that then disturbs the the people trying to work alone. So the second floor we've never quite sorted out and that's partly why we never finalized the signs. Um, and we can look at them again, but the silent zone is the uh, going from the fireplace room all the way through the nonfiction and then this floor here is a quiet zone. The second floor is quite part quiet, part social. Children's is of course, yes. Uh, most of the downstairs is social. And then uh, the uh, computer area on the lower level is quiet. Okay, dividing it into zone sounds to make sense. I just uh, wanted to say as a patron, I didn't really jump out at well, what zone you know. I was in. Yeah. Um, you know, sorry, I wouldn't necessarily know. Okay, okay. Good I think those were the only uh, questions I had relating to the director's report. Uh, thanks very much. Sure. Dennis, questions, comments? I had no questions on the material that's in there. It's, it's nicely documented, great color pictures and everything. Uh, you could probably do black and white and cut back on some of the gloss. Um, I, I just like to comment and help others understand that because many of, of the folks that work here don't work in the business world, you know, many of the library employees, they miss out on the uh, things that people work in the business world uh, experience. So when somebody says some bad comments about their company or the work they're doing, I think they should also be aware that in the real world, uh, there's uh, uh, buyouts of companies and people are let go. And gee, those people that were there are feeling really sad and not happy. Uh, there's uh, layoffs, uh, selling of companies, 10,000 people being let go. Uh, again, gee, I think, again, those people were really sad you know, about the decisions that were made and the discussions that went on to let go. 10,000 people. Uh, selling of other companies, uh, you know, because they're not number one or number two in the uh, uh, for, uh, area of their business. Again, gee, I thought I was working as hard as I possibly could, and yet they sold that company. Got to come. So in, in the real world, where we, we talk about loss of jobs, not just, you know, some uh, comments. And I think if people go back and look at the tape, uh, you will hear me say on multiple occasions about the good programs and the good people. They are good programs and good people. I did hear you say the, it, the, the, the problem is, is, is that the taxpayers are paying for all of those programs. And in, in my proposition is, 
is that if we were to take a majority of those programs and try to open up an independent location, I mean, FedEx, they do posters. That's part of the core, you know, one of their core things. You know, so I don't know why the library does that. Uh, but, you know, so there's, there's some core things that the library should be doing, in my opinion. And there are things that if, if you were to take them and put them in a storefront, people wouldn't be knocking down the door to make buttons to plant seeds and so on. Good programs. They're fun programs. My kids participate in the programs here. However, at some point you have to draw the line. Because unlike in the real business world, when you have to hit the bottom line, we don't seem to have to do that here. And, uh, and it's because of that that we tend to I mean, I've, I've been in places where, you know, gee, it's a great idea. You know, they, they talk about something that's a great idea. And it is a great idea. And, and that document, the, the library document, the, 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 newsletter. the newsletter, is a great newsletter. But, you know, we also talked about at the time of trying to save costs. And so rather than to save, you know, to, 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 to hold the line, <laughs> we, we again decided to increase it. So it's, it's a matter of trying to hold the budget down. We over-communicate on what we do here. The posters, banners, podcasts, where do you draw the line? Okay, now. I, I think that might be for a different discussion. You know, actually, you, you, beautiful suggestions, I agree. I think what we need to do is for our next go-around I think we need to really concentrate on making lists of those things that we can decide on as a board. Because very often we don't make a concerted effort to identify those and then to make a real decision as a board. And then to say, okay, we've, we've considered it, we've listened to the pros and cons, and now we've decided. But so, shouldn't we do that as part, part of the budget? Well, I agree, but the <laughs> process is over. So well, let's yeah. go for next week. Well, and we had this, I had the same comments last year. I, I had somebody come up to me yeah. just so let's move the forward and try to try to do that. And said, you know, you said those same things last year. Yeah. Sure. Let's move forward and try to do that. And uh, Carolyn, do you have any comments on the director's report? Um I did have a couple. Um I noticed oh, did um Victoria already go to this leadership? She did. She did. Oh, so she's already presented? She wasn't presenting. She was, uh, oh, she, she had a hard to get into, into it. it. Yes. Yes. Okay. And, um, okay, I thought she was presenting and I was going to ask, when our staff goes somewhere and presents for whatever purpose, I mean, could we see the video? Could we learn about what they're doing? Because, you know, we don't know a whole lot about our staff. So they're sort of hidden, except for sometimes they sit in these seats. So, I mean, when they're doing tremendous things like this, maybe that's something else. If they're going to give a presentation, maybe that should be on our website. You know, I'm all about promoting them, and we keep hiding it all in this paper document. But that's okay. I was just trying to clarify if she had, I thought it was a presentation. But you're right. Then when I reread it, she was part of a team, and it was some team building with uh, the way you relate to one another or something. Okay, that sounds good. Then I had another, let's see, well I noticed, oh yes, um, Adult Services Librarian Val is resigning. She's part time, I thought she was full time. They're two vets, so I understand your confusion. So yes. I was, I'm thinking of the wrong one. Yes, yeah, um, Val de la Caille, uh, is a Sunday, Saturday to Sunday person. Okay, because I remember time. her, okay. All right, and then my last question was, I noticed on page 45 you list FOIA requests. And someone by the name of Jared Rutiki um, submitted a request, and I was wondering, did he receive this? We always, we, we must answer FOIA requests. So this was sent to him and he received it? Certainly. 
What about when you deny them, though? Sometimes, is there a reason you deny them? There, there can be, but if we have the information that's being requested and we don't have to create a whole new document mm -hmm. to fulfill it, then we deny it. But no, this is all, uh, the Better Government Association makes this request once or twice a year. We have a, we have a couple sort of regular FOIAs that we fulfill. Okay, can I just ask one thing? I know sometimes you have lists of different people. Could we just put um, a notation that the FOIA request was I don't know, completed or submitted or when it's denied or because if I know something's denied when I read it, I could see maybe why. You know, I I didn't I thought this would have been denied. Okay, but it was sent out. It's all public record. Okay, and I'm just thinking when you have so many of them, it's good to know if they were um, submitted or denied. Okay, that was all um, I had about that. But um, uh, regarding your comments about staff are not appreciated. Um, I have to tell you, for years, we always seem to turn things around, and all I'm hearing is we're offending our staff. When in actuality, we're in a budget meeting, and the issue is with the administration, and the lack of having a budget process, the lack of providing detail, Maybe, and, and it's awesome that during the year everyone tries to save money, that's what everybody does. But any organization needs to have a real budget process. For years, you misled us. You told us uh, Carolyn, that we had. No, 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 no. Carolyn, that you, we no, had, no, no, you are starting again a conversation about the budget process. Okay, no, this I'm is, talking about, she brought it up, they were upset in our budget meeting. I okay, now it, stop. No, 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 it wasn't just You are talking said, again about the budget process. Said. It doesn't Getting, matter. I'm sorry, let me, let me. The issue is not the staff. We love yes. the staff. Do we ever interact with them? No. We don't have committees when yes. we can relate with the staff learn from them what's going on, work with them, because I think okay, while Carolyn, we're elected... Carolyn, let's talk about committees. I think we time. were all elected as trustees because we want to better this library. Yes, Carolyn, we are going to Quit have a discussion. No, I'm sorry, but I'm you're complaining still about committees. We are going to have a discussion about I'm committees. I'm talking uh, about staff. Yeah, and you mentioned you committees were going because to Because that's how libraries meet with staff. All right, then we that's will, how we're going to have a discussion about committees. relate with staff. Carolyn, please. There are committees please. all over the place. Carolyn. So anyway, so when we have meetings about budgets, and a couple of yes. the trustees are expecting to receive documentation Okay, with that's details. a budget comment, not to direct We don't report. receive Can We, we don't receive on? them, and then that's why yeah. there are issues. That's a budget comment. We, you know what? Carolyn, Excuse stop. me, Spadoni. Candy, do you have any comments? This about the was based on a budget meeting. We're done with talking about the budget. It's not at this meeting. I agree with you. I have a lot of stuff I could say about that budget yes. meeting, too, but this isn't the time it's, to bring This it is up. about the director's report, so thank you. It's Candy. about her comment about staff being upset yeah. when it was never about staff, but we, she Great. tends to turn it around and put it on them. Right. It's not about Very good. them. Thank you. Is she a staff comments. member? Yes. Patty? She's an administrator. She's still a staff member. She's still yeah, an employee Patty, Patty, at this Patty. library. Let's focus on the director's report. Yes, you were. Anyway, Thank you. Um, I just want to say, when I saw on the passport section that they actually misrepresented how much, how many was put out and it went up, how many they actually did for that one month, I thought that's pretty cool. It went up almost 30 uh, passports. That's all money coming in, so that's that's pretty cool. How many man hours does it take for that? That's a whole other question. Uh, per uh, passport application, it takes uh, a person anywhere from uh, 15 minutes to half an hour, depending on the complexity. So if it's just a straight, normal, I have all my documentation, uh, I'm a US citizen, I've lived here all my life, and I have all the notarized documents and so forth, it's a very quick process. The ones uh, that cause issues are if there's a name change, a divorce, if uh, a, a child uh, custody uh, chain has been interrupted because of adoption or, or anything like that, then there's additional forms and documents which need to be uh, I was just looking at staffing. Staffing. It's, it's not a total win. It's like 
take bringing your lunch and saying, oh, I pay $10 a day for lunch five days a week, but I'm bringing my lunch, so I'm saving $50. You're not saving $50. So there's an offset to that income coming in from passports due to man hours. And this is what bothers me, is every positive thing that we have when in my director's report gets turned into a negative. It's so It's not a negative. You shouldn't be doing it here. Well, we've made that decision as a board. So if you need to bring up the passports again, we will do it at another session when we have it in front of the Dennis. The way we're going to start doing our procedures, we're going to have items on the, the agenda so that the public can discuss it. Yeah. We will discuss it as a yeah. board and yeah, we'll make do. motions, and that's Five what we're going minutes. to do. So, you know, bringing up a separate issue, saying we shouldn't do it, that needs well, to be discussed. Right? It's my opinion. Right. Um, well, thanks. A sure way to not get what you want is to raise your voice and complain about it. It's the only way to get hurt. Not necessarily. No. Seriously, Dennis, no. you come up with a lot of good ideas that I would be very much interested in pursuing if you didn't come up with them with some kind of sarcastic, okay. sarcastic I'm, I'm, thank I'm, you I'm, or attitude. Yeah, thank you. Excuse me. That's exactly what I was just going to say. See, I feel bad. Well. Well, it doesn't hear. necessarily help either. Maybe People are talking that. about me and the way I'm. Right to your face. Sarcasm is not. We're telling going you that we're willing to do this. We want to do it. Let's do it in a civilized manner without raising our voice, without being accusatory to and and demeaning. And I'm not being accusatory. I'm saying not. Or stating a fact that we don't get the information we request. Demeaning. No, it's not. I'm, I'm sorry. Can okay. we have the vote so, over again about who's going to be president? <laughs> yeah. so anyway, far, this job really as usual, we're beautiful. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> as usual, the beautiful director's report. It tells us a Thank lot you. of things. Our monthly statistics are always amazing. I know that you evaluate all the programming that we have. I, I don't understand why there are people who don't like our program. I didn't say that. Well, certain pro certain programs you I it's it's the people it. required to run those programs. If you have five hundred programs you need to have X number of people. If you cut down your programs you cut down the number and of I people. think that they do evaluate. It's not like it's a flippant thing. They do I, evaluate I never said it was. Well, and then I, okay. I don't understand. All I know is I agree with you that we will reevaluate all of our line items and would be good for our souls. Great. All right. Very good. That was just that was great. So I have one comment myself, page forty-three. Um, and this is uh, very good. Uh, kudos to Dave about replacing light fixtures and bulbs oh, uh, yes. for our electricity pumps. I, I, it's 83% uh, cut our electricity by 83% from our Huge. benefits. Amazing. Huge. So it would be interesting much. to see the outlay of what the cost was to bring that in. Because that, that's a, I, I'd like to do that in my house. Sure cut my bill by 83%. So, I, you know, th there has to be change in the fixture. Sure. So, there's, again, there's a cash outlay yep. for that. Yep. And, uh, but I think many of times, I, don't know, I can't speak for this, but I think many of times the, the cost, <coughs> his cost you were going to spend regardless. But you're right, that would be a nice um, comparison. So, okay, very good. Let's uh, move on. Um, and the communications. What page are we looking at there? Pardon? Page 52. Page 52. Yeah. Do you have any comments on our patron suggestions? Hmm. No. Very hard. Very hard. I imagine they were. All right. Uh, got um, oops. friends in the library. Anything, Carolyn? No, we didn't have a meeting. No meeting? Okay. Legislative? No. Nope. Rails? No. Nope. Great. Moving right along. Uh, tonight we have a secretary's report uh, to read into the record. Diane, would you do that for us? Yes. 
notice of public hearing on June 19, 2019, at the hour of 6.55 p.m. at the Niles Main District Library, Boardroom, 6960 Ocean Street, Niles, Illinois, concerning Tentative Ordinance 19-01. A tentative ordinance providing for budget and appropriations of the Niles Main District Library for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2019 and ending June 30, 2020 was published in the journal Topics and News on Wednesday, May 15, 2019. Copies of the aforementioned tentative ordinance will be available in the administrative office of the Niles Main District Library after May 22, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday. Anything else I think? No. All right. Uh, so next, uh, we have. I need a motion to approve the expenditure, not to exceed ten thousand eight hundred fourteen dollars and eighty-eight cents, for the removal of. I'm sorry. For the renewal of twelve Adobe Creative Cloud desktop apps, a one-year subscription licenses from CDW-G. Uh, do I have a motion? Motion. Uh, Diane, second. Uh, so we have a memo on this on page 56. Any questions on this motion? Karen? Just a quick one. The last sure. line of the last second last paragraph says TDWHG is an authorized Adobe government customer reseller. What does that mean when it says reseller? Um, does that mean that they're on, they buy and resell to us? Or what's well, they, that word mean? So we, uh, they get their. Um, they have a sales agreement with Adobe. Adobe supplies them with uh, licenses, and then they resell those licenses. Okay. So um, uh, what Adobe does is sets the price for governmental clients, uh -huh. period. And uh, so there's you know there's really no room for negotiation. You know, an Adobe license is X, okay. and that X minus ten percent or X plus ten percent is just X. Okay. All right. Thank you. Great. Dennis, do you have any comments on this one? Questions? No, I, I understand the, uh, the whole process. Uh, <coughs> Thank you, Carolyn. You know, I did have a question. I, this is for um, Creative Studio. Is that why we're ordering these? And for some um, for some patrons, is that who's going to get these? So, um, uh, third line down, this is the breakdown of the installations and digital services are as follows. Digital services. Uh, five uh, licenses for the uh, patron maps, and those are okay. uh, uh, map books that the patrons can use, and then you see the rest there. Okay, great. So what I'm confused about is last month we approved two maps, and I, I assume either they're for marketing or they're for, for digital uh, They're for digital services. Okay, so... Are those for staff or is that for patrons? Uh, that's for patrons at the region. It's for the patrons. Is it really? Yep. Okay. All right, thank Great. you. Thank you, Carol. Katie? Mm -hmm. No? Diane? Nothing. Great, thank you. I don't have any comments either. Uh, we have a, uh, okay, uh, Diane, could you please take a look? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. 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 Diane? Yes. Katie? Yes. 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 Okie doke. Uh, we passed the tentative budget at our last meeting, so there is uh, no unfinished business. Um, and uh, we have to go into executive session, I take it. So I'll make a motion. I need a motion to go into executive session. I'm sorry. I need a motion to make it go into executive session to discuss director's review. Uh, right. I, I, motion. I do uh, make a motion to do that and to discuss the appointment plan. Application this point comes to dismiss those specific employees of the Niagara District Library. Second. Excuse me, I have a question. We skipped over 13 because. Because we passed that last month. I thought it was 10. Oh, it's, so it, it, we're just calling it a tentative budget was it tentative. twice. No, we passed the tentative ordinance on Monday. So we don't need to do it tonight. We don't have to do it tonight. It doesn't get voted on until next month. I, 
so oh, that's because, my point. Our, our so, because, our, yeah. so because we had to mail both packets at the same time, and there wasn't a lot of room between the budget meeting and the regular meeting, we put it on both agendas in the event that it wasn't passed at the Monday meeting. But it was passed at the Monday meeting. So that makes the inclusion on this, on this uh, agenda uh, superfluous. So that's why this. Okay, but I thought tentative meant we were still discussing it. Yeah, and that's right. It's not passed until the June. The next okay. Week. In, in okay. June, you'll address the final budget. Okay, and we're not discussing any more budget today. No. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. My understanding is I thought, I think it was, because uh, I wasn't here last month, I think it was a month before, that we decided that, that it was kind of like, that unfinished business would be the time that if any of the board members oh, that's in the other. That was in other? It's okay, in. cool. Great. I just wanted to get to clarify that. Thank you. Okay, all right. So we need to take a roll. All right, take a roll for the executive session. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Oh, um, yes. Dennis? Yes. 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 And what time are you? Please take the Karen? Yes. Here. Carolyn? Here. Dennis? Here. Here. Danny? Here. Here. All right. Uh, other, Karen, do you have anything for other? No. Dennis, anything for other? Carolyn, anything for other? No. No? Patty, anything for other? Just the fact that I missed last month, I wanted to, again, just to say how great I thought everything that I attended pertaining to the sixth year last well, nice. very nice. the kids yeah. session was unbelievable the the sock hop and the hula hoops and it was a lot of fun anything yeah. no? okay i have a couple of things <clears throat> we do have a, a something called a policy for the selection of materials um, which is something we would do and discuss or, or we have to pass, pass every two years. And at the last time they did it was in, uh, I'm sorry, 17. So we need to do that again. Uh, we didn't, we didn't, could you get copies? Yeah, okay. So uh, Susan will send out copies. It's, it, read it, it's, it, it's probably not going to change a lot. But give it consideration, and then we'll look at it for next. What year. actually is this that you're talking about? Uh, it is called. <coughs> It's the resolution of the Board of Library Trustees of the Niles Public Library District, Cook County, Illinois, approving a policy for the selection of materials and use of library materials and facilities. We, there's an Illinois statute that says all libraries have to do this every two years. So okay. we did it back do they in have, 2017. Did they come down with what they feel it should be? And then we, we kind we of. We have a policy. What that? we'll do is uh, we'll send out the existing policy. Yeah. And then next month we can review it and make changes that anybody suggests okay. and we'll okay. go through the normal okay. process cool. of uh, updating the policy okay. or okay. approving it as, as we go along. Right? Okay. Um, so I would like to. Uh, review and update our bylaws, our policies, and our board packet. Because I, I you know, I, we, I think we can all acknowledge that we have um, procedural uh, uh, opportunities that maybe we can improve the way this this uh, board works. Uh, and I would like to call a special meeting if I would like to know if everybody's available, uh, just so that we can focus on. Our, our procedures. We, we say that we're supposed to be following Robert's rules, but I think we very often do not. I would like to review that sort of thing and elicit everybody's comments and, and come to a, a you know a consensus on how we operate our, our meeting. Um, because I know there's a lot of um, uh, anger sometimes and hurt feelings. Uh, I was I'm proposing that we have a special meeting on uh, June 12th. What day of the week is yeah, it? It's a, it's a Wednesday again. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. So what I would like I to do. I will check it out and I right. can let. Um, let if you would all check your have, calendars. Maybe a little further in the, in the future. Do you think it's too soon? Well, um, I, I just think not everyone's here tonight. Sure. Um, oh. Yeah, maybe okay. not. Okay. Yeah. If it's further in the future, we can okay. have an opportunity. All right. To go so let's let's maybe look for one in, in July. 
if there's there's consensus. I'm okay with that. Just let me know what date because right. I need to. Can I ask a question? Sure, Carol. Is it about all bylaws, or are you just specifically specifically zeroing in on a meeting? On our meeting. Yeah, not the bylaws of the library, how library. And so you, it would just be one meeting then, right? Yeah, I think we should. If we have one, that we can focus on just how we do our, uh, how we operate. You mean uh, OMA, we, or we, what are we, what are we discussing? Pardon me. How we follow OMA? Because isn't that about our meeting? So the open meeting directors, we really don't have any choice whether or not we want to follow them. Right. So what yeah, are we going to discuss? I want to discuss how we operate as a board. I want to discuss how we proceed along uh, suggestions, um, uh, motions, how we vote, how we, uh, how we elicit comments from each other, and how we operate. I just think that if we had some more standardized procedures that we all agreed upon, that things could go a little easier. Do we have anything now written down? Yes. yes. We, have, yes. Uh, we have our bylaws. Didn't we, we did it last that. time probably about two years ago or so? It's been a while. Yeah, I know it's been a while. It's been a while. And it wasn't much of a tweak that we did. It was something about voting order, I Yes, we, we, we really didn't change our lot. Yeah, you you uh, have the, the this document that you approved two years ago and then two years before that so that, you know, every time it's a new board, you can approve it again. It was the document on effective board meetings based on the Public Library Trustee Manual. And it is... Uh, it has excerpts from that and then some library district timelines and uh, some guidelines about chain of command and things like that and that combined with the library's bylaws which is based on statute uh, informs how the, the meetings are run and so I think Tim would prefer something that's a little bit more of a combined I, I and would like something that's a little clearer. clearer thing. So anyway we'll shoot for July. Um, I'll send out maybe a couple of proposed dates and then you can Okay see cool uh, thank you. Know. you. So, uh, Carolyn, you had mentioned committees uh, at a previous meeting. If uh, you all could think about what committees you'd like for the board to have, why don't you send me those suggestions and we can discuss that at some point. And also, Carolyn, I think I think we should eliminate the friends liaison position because they're they're just not meeting. I'm not even too sure if they're fine with me. Yeah. Whatever okay. you want. So if they if they do start again, then we can readdress that. Sure. All right. That's my other. Uh, so now I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion. Second. Great. Diane, could you please call the roll? Okay, so that is Diane. Okay, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. 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 yes.